If you want your sports podcast funny and real, JB and Betty Blue Review, and ooh, the Valley Hot, baby. Tune in to the former Arizona Cardinal Jeremy Bridges and Benny Blue for the JB and Benny Blue Review. Oh, Benny, check this out, man. Pow, pow, pow. I ain't rocking nothing but Valley Boys Association all summer. Love bro. it. You know what I'm Jack and Cody, baby. Uncensored. Late nights here on the Casual Sports Radio Network. People, good people, good people. What is happening, Witcher? You know what I'm saying? Make sure that we can smooth out here for episode two, three, zero. That's my right, baby, baby of the JB and Benny Blue review. Reviewers, how are we doing? Football is back. Are we living life? Are we feeling good? Are we enjoying the games? JB, I saw a, a redneckish woman vomiting her guts out. At the uh, Bengals Steelers game, it is on Twitter. It has went viral. I encourage you to check it out. It is gross, but it's also equal parts hilarious. That's when you know football is back. People throwing up on the stands and fighting each other. God damn it! That's uh, right. Yeah, you know, you know, you know, you know. It's a fight at the Raiders yeah. game. You know what I mean? Just, that's like that's like an oxymoron. You know what I'm saying? It's like the, the, the epitome of redundancy. A fight at the Raiders game. Like, oh, what? Oh, okay, yeah. It just kind of happens, right? Football's back. That's right. And listen, for all football season, please follow us at JB and Benny Blue on all social media. And please subscribe to our YouTube for more content. We are live streaming here Wednesday nights. If you can't see in the ticker, this is a pre-record. Your boy is going out of the country. So if you drop the comment, you guys can you know talk amongst yourselves within the social medias. <laughs> right, um, right. We're not going to see it. Play nice. Like, you know, we're Play nice. Play nice. Man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, follow us individually on Instagram. Follow JB73, King JB73 for now, and follow yours truly at Benny Blue Eyes. You're on TikTok. Same thing as always, JB and Benny Blue. Of course, you saw the intro. Follow our family, casualsports.com, K S R N Arizona. You heard them last week joining us for our 2022 NFL Savage Season Preview. Run that back again. We did playoff picks, Super Bowl picks, the whole goddamn thing as JB sips his drink. And listen, man, if you still want that audio, go give us that one hot dollar. Patreon.com. That's it. One. One Just damn one. dollar. And by the way, one there's exclusive content up on our Patreon. It's from JB's True NFL Stories. The time he got cut twice in one season. So if you want that clip, you have to be a Patreon reviewer and all that. And JB just completed an episode of Pointing Rangers with live streams Tuesdays on Twitter. Yes. Shout out to our AAT Sports, all about the birds family and all of that shit coming up oh we got to recap a wild week one of some booze ball and of course make our week two savage picks before we get to that dr bridges just the the, the weekly the weekly check-in my guy how how are we how are we feeling now that football's back i know it was a tough week we're gonna get to your bg but how how are you feeling sir I feel great, and I mean, and I'm not really like bummed out about the bird game. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, if you saw my story on my Instagram, you know what I'm saying? At seven three King JB seven three, I would literally post it on when I was leaving the stadium in my cooler and cool shades. I saw with the, those. with the look away picture. I'm not even gonna put up any of my drunk memes right now, meaning that I don't think the season is over. We're not All there. I'm gonna drunk say, out, ain't ready. Drunk Barney, drunk ain't out, ready. drunk out, drunk Barney, ain't none of the homies ready to go down yet. All I'm gonna say is, is that. We need to do better. And we will. We will. We'll talk a little more about that. But no, I'm good, man. You know what I'm saying? Just watching football, college football, NFL football. It's just yeah. beautiful. Hearing about high school football. I can't wait for it to get a little cooler out here in Arizona so I can start to go watch some of my young boys play in high school ball, man. So it's just, it's the, man, it's the most wonderful time of the year, but this is what it is. You're damn right. Yeah, man. It's getting cooler out here finally. And yeah, it just, it felt, you know what? It felt good for the first time in months, JB, just to be. Just to be, just to be sitting down and just watching games. You know, yeah, you might, you might run a couple errands. You might do right. a couple yeah. things in between. You might, yeah, you might, you might, yeah, you might, you might, yeah, you might fold some laundry. You know what I'm saying? It is a Sunday. You know what I'm right. saying? You might, right. you, you might do a couple chores. things. You might do a couple domesticated things. 
Right? But when it's all said and done, we're watching football, baby. You know what I'm saying? It's on. Yeah. Listen, man, go to JB and Benny Blue Review.com slash store BG. I know it was a tough week. The Bird Gang All Day shirts are on sale now. Use code BG for 10% off. You're going to see us pumping that more on all of our social channels. So that's up now. It is live. You can you can get all that right yes. there. JB go get the Bird Gang All Day shirts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he, Hoodies. He's got it. He was right in the story. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I had yeah. mine on people. I'm walking by people, being there, walking by people in the stadium. They'll say, look at the Bird Gang All Day shirt. They're like, like, yo, that's like, yeah, they like, oh, this stuff. It's gang, gang. You know what I'm saying? Gang, gang. Speaking of repping, tapping with the Young Boys Valley Boys Association clothing. They got some new shit going. I've been paying attention to their posts, their stories. They got some new clothing coming. JB's repping. Use podcast code podcast22 as your code for 20% off your order at checkout. And of course, tapping with our guy. It's timbuy.com. If you want to hold the strap, get your new or pre-owned vehicle text review 515-444-7003 or dm him at it's tim to buy on instagram and listen man sponsorship music you want to be a guest on the show hate mail whatever you got jb and benny Blue review at gmail.com so that's it man so before we get into uh week two we got to understand what happened here in uh week one so before we get to any of these specific games uh dr bridges just, just give, just give the reviewers overall. Just watching the full week, your savage assessment of week one. What you saw across the whole slate of games, good sir. It's going to be a very competitive year in the NFL, right? Very competitive. Of course, we saw a couple of teams that fell short of the glory. Uh, in fact, our two Super Bowl teams from last year, the LA Rams and the Cincinnati Bengals, uh, both fell. Right? Came out flat. You know what I'm saying? Turnovers, well, the Rams, by mistakes. The way. Right. Of course, I called the Rams, and I called Cincinnati's. By the way, you know what I'm saying. So, yeah, but yeah. the Steelers, but the Steelers, I, I knew that they were going to be a better football team than people were expecting to be, and they're going to continue to be a snowball rolling downhill as the season goes. Um, but again, competitive football, and that's what we want to see. We don't want to see no sorry ass games like the like the fucking Sunday night game was. You know what I'm saying? With Dallas, leave it to Dallas, right? Yeah, we're but we'll talk about that in a minute. But at the same time, overall, man, good football. How about the Houston Texans? Right. Oh, how about the Houston Texans? How about Lovey Smith's? I'm gonna say it. How about Lovey Smith's Houston Texans? Right. Ooh, That's beautiful. Yeah. Great job, Lovey. You know what I'm saying? Getting in there. You know, a lot of people thought that was you know what I'm saying like a you know a whatever you know what I'm saying a mercy hire. You know what I'm saying? Which it probably was. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get back in the good graces of the people. You know what I'm saying? After all the shit. You know what I'm saying? That's going on in Houston and, and some of the things that we're hearing out of the Houston camp from the players. You know what I'm saying? Are leaving Houston. And saying, hey, whoop de like this is, you know, whatever they're saying. I'm not going to repeat nothing, but we, we see people leaving, and that's never a good sign, right? But Lovey Smith rallying the troops, getting them boys hot, ready to roll for Indianapolis team, and on paper, should have beat them, right? right? We had our first tie in the NFL first season. First tie of the year. God yeah. damn. Yep, that's right. That, so that, that's a good assessment. I, I have two, two things that I noticed about this week. Number one, you talk about the Houston Texans. I look at the Texans, the Bears, and the Seahawks, and I put that I put them in the don't write us off just yet. They heard the noise about how they're going to be trash coming out of the gate. And listen, you called the Bears. They got it done in a sloppy game out there in the old windy city. Nasty out there. And, and listen, that Monday Night Football was a great game. Geno was slinging it. They were running some great offensive sets. And oh, yeah. They, well, no. they, they came to play. They did. You know, they helped they want, us they, in this homecoming. They came to compete, uh, but at the same time, two turnovers on your own goal line, hard to bounce back from that. Hard. Right, right, right? exactly. And the other takeaway I have from this week, JB, is I'm sure you uh, you witnessed and appreciated, especially with your BG and looking at Rages, is that the preseason matters. A lot of these oh, guys yes, didn't sir. play, and they came out oh, flat, yes, and they yes, were not sir. executing. It was not yes, pressed. Sir. Yes, oh, sir. Yes, sir. No, no, no. I, and when people ask me what happened, and we're going to, you know, of course, we're going to talk about it, but I simply say, you saw one team that was prepared. You saw one team that wasn't. And that's in a lot of teams. Now, mind you again, I, I, I've i already said what I've said in our previous episode about what I think the Rams are going to do this year, right? So I'm not going to blame that on the preseason or nothing, right? They got some issues that we're not even talking about right now that are not that are not playing to the visible eye, right? But um, with us, with Green Bay, I think with Green Bay, I think with Green Bay, that lack of preseason play, it's bad, especially with those young receivers they have. Uh, Rogers not having to sing, you know what I'm saying, having to having the unison with those guys. And I know for us, you know what I'm saying, it was just, <laughs> yeah. ugh, ill. Yes. 
right? Yeah. So we're we're gonna get we're gonna get into the the pack here in, in a couple games. But hey, man, you know where we go? You know we gotta start with viewers. We gotta start there in the desert. We're gonna take the L. The home season over forty four to twenty one. JB, does Kyle need to hit the books? Does he does he maybe need to pull that homework clause back out? Because I saw I saw some athletic moves, but I didn't necessarily see some sharp moves from the BG. But what did, what did you see watching the so, entire game? So one thing I'm gonna say is that they got out coached horribly, right? Oh, uh, between sure. between Eric yeah. Bieniemy and, uh, and and Andy Reid, you know what I'm saying? Those two great offensive minds, and then uh, Spag Nasty on defense, you know what I'm saying? Coming with some blitzes, with some weird looks, you know what I'm saying? And yes, there's gonna be there's gonna be a need for some more film study because uh, there's one blitz in particular where Kyler has uh, two guys, two defenders on his right side, outside of the, the down linemen and the linebackers, both of them defensive backs. One of them's coming, one of them's not, right? They disguise it. One of them starts to back off, the other one comes. Bam, rocks his ass, you know what I'm saying? Out of nowhere, he didn't see the guy coming. Cool. He didn't see the guy coming. Like, and that, that's his throwing side, you know what I'm saying? So he hit him on his right side, his throwing side. Like, like that's film study, right? That's film study. Because I know there's not a blitz they cooked up out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? That's the shit that they ran last year. But that's film study. When you're not going and doing your homework, this is what you get. But at the same time, again, outside of that, just – Again, we got out coached. We got out prepared. We got out everything, right? It all falls back to coaching with me, right? It all falls back to coaching with me. Uh, Vance Joseph, same on you because our linebackers are horrible, right? Uh, uh, Zayvon Collins, is he is one of the worst linebackers I've ever seen in my life. And I'm, just, I, I'm not going to stand on that. He, it ain't nothing he can do to show me that he's better because he he's made, you know, he, he done some, he did a couple things during the game that were suitable for his position. And then poor Isaiah Simmons just looks lost out there. He don't know where he's supposed to be. He don't know when he's supposed to do what. That's not cool, right? But, again, that's a lack of preparation, right? Bird game, do better. We need a great week of preparation because we can totally beat a lot of teams in this league. Most teams in this league, we can beat them, right? But lack of preparation and not lack of execution, we're not going to beat anyone. So that's what we saw. Uh, Cliff Kingsbury opened his mouth and said in an interview talking about we basically treat this as our fourth preseason game. That's dumb as hell for you to even open your mouth and say some shit like that, right? No, you don't. Once the regular season starts, buddy, it's grind time, right? It is what it is. Preseason, regular season, two different things, two different animals. Yeah. It is what it is, right? It is what it is. We need a better showing next week, and I believe we will. I believe we'll go out there and beat the Raiders, but of course we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah, and listen, you mentioned the Chiefs. That that was just chef's kiss play calling. I mean, they didn't they didn't oh, miss yeah. a beat without Tyreek Hill. He was getting everybody involved. Mahomes is, you know, on uh, any any given he's, day, he's, he might, he's might the, be the best, best guy in the league. Uh, he's the best quarterback in the damn league. He's yeah. the best player in the league, period, right? Yeah. Uh Benny, like to be honest, like so so one thing that I realized and one of my guys is Jim's over today. Is that we didn't turn the ball over once, and I because I I mean I didn't watch after the, after the beginning of the third quarter I didn't watch the rest of the game. Like, I left, you know what I'm saying? Didn't didn't uh, you know didn't check the score or none of that. I knew he was looking at the ass whoop, so I was like, I, you know, I'm watching this one. We didn't turn the ball over one time, right? You would think we turned the ball over eight times, right? Because every time they touched the ball, they fucking scored damn near, right? So that's a high point that we you know we're taking care of the ball, but at the same time it's just like we got to sharpen things up, and again that comes with preparation, preparation, preparation. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. Er, Ertz, Ertz got a touchdown pass late. Uh, Mahomes ultimately had five TDs. And yeah, I mean, listen, the thing, the takeaways from not watching the game, but just watching some throw highlights, the takeaways that I have from the BG were that back seven was getting absolutely torched. They looked lost, and that definitely starts with coaching. They were completely out of position. And then the big plays I noticed that was troubling, and I think that's the connection that we talked about from last season into this season, and you, you've been harping on it with the pass the clipboard, that connection between Kyler and Cliff is that anytime Kyler made a big play during that game, I noticed it was always from a broken play or from mm-hmm. an athletic move. It wasn't right. from a, it wasn't from right. him making correct leads right. or say well designed play. Neither of those things happened. He'd be scrambling, and then he just would sling it to somebody that was open. So yeah, right. to the casual fan, it looks great. But from an execution standpoint, it was horrible. It's like, bro, yes. you can't live and die off this cat scrambling nope. and rambling and finally making a play. You're never going to win that way, especially against against garbage teams. Yeah, you can win. That right. You can exactly. athleticize them, but the Chiefs would be enemy and a big red. Hell no. Not up here. Make, they're going to make you pay. So Every time. They're going to be in Vegas against the Raiders. So we'll talk yeah. about that here. In just a <laughs> Clearly going to kill you. Yeah. That one. Oh, my God. All right. JB, taking it to my kitties. They lose at home in their home opener, 38 to 35. 
Main things I saw, I'm guessing you probably didn't see the game or maybe you saw the highlights, but they did. Yeah. They started things that they did kind of last year. They played from behind, clock management issues of when MCDC called the timeout, and then still some defensive issues. Aiden Hutchinson, I know you were the number two pick. You were over pursuing like a mug, sir. You were mm. running past tackles all game. And listen, I mean, I. The offense actually operated at a very good clip. I mean, Jamal Williams had a couple touchdowns. Swift was doing this thing. Goff, Goff wasn't making mistakes. I mean, we know he's not amazing. Right. But, you know, offense was actually clicking. They were doing right, really right. well. But the defense needed to show up. And then on the flip side, man, I mean, four rushing touchdowns for the Eagles. And, you know, Hurst, Hurst was slinging that thing a bit. You know, A.J. Brown and him had a good connection. Um, you know, it was definitely, you know, it was definitely the, the Detroit jankification at home. But the kiddies... They showed that fight. I was happy, but it was still kind of the some of the a lot of the same issues, quite frankly, that they were dealing with, you know, from last year. But obviously, right. you know, that that's my takeaway from it. what did you see from what you kind of saw from? It? I mean, just the highlights. You know, what I'm saying like, um, I mean, of course, you know, the opportunistic plays from the Eagles, uh, and then of course, like you said, four rushing touchdowns. That's you know that that's a telltale of, of undisciplined defense, gap football not being played, or say gap defense not being played. Uh, and then, of course, you know, when you have a over aggressive outside guy, you know, what I'm saying it's very easy to run their way. You know, what I'm saying and if I ain't even watch the game, I have to know I'm pretty sure they were running right at Hutchinson the whole game, right? Because he was shooting his ass upfield, you know, what I'm saying making the C gap a C gap, right? Yeah, he was he was blowing right past everything, like, right? Yeah. Right, yeah, you can't do that. You got to put your hands on the tackle, uh, outside tight end, you know, what I'm saying whatever, whoever, whoever it may be, the why put your hands on them and condense the whole play, uh play uh, contained that's how that's how you have to play that you play through the run you know what i'm saying so you play the ball you play the pass through the run that's just the way defensive ends have to play that's how defensive linemen have to play period so other than that man i mean i feel like again I, we already talked about this in left up so i feel like you guys are gonna be eight games strong right but against the philly team you know what I'm saying? i feel like you guys i then I, I called it i said I, I said whoever makes the most mistakes is gonna lose this game and i feel like y'all make the most mistakes you know what i'm saying so uh, and then, of course, you know what I'm saying, it just comes down to, like, y'all, again, y'all scratch and claw like your coach say, right? Like coach say, that's the attitude. And this is why y'all going to win a lot of games this year, because that's your attitude, because winning 38 to 35, right? Here we go again, winning games three points or less, right? So y'all going to win more than your loss it is what it is. But against that team, more cohesion, um, more talent, you know what I'm saying, like player for player, especially skill-wise. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, I mean, listen, Dan, Dan Campbell. The main thing that's got to tra- the main thing that's got to change from last year, this year is you, you guys got to close the door, man. You can't get this close and, and, and trick it off again. We got to close the door to go for, to double our win total and hey, keep everything moving. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Keeping it in the NFC North, there was a uh, Vikings. They win their home in T twenty three to seven, and and you 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 mentioned it briefly, but. Radges was out there doing Joe Rogan's podcast, taking ayahuasca and not hanging out with his baby face receivers, who uh, he basically stopped throwing to after a couple drops. Mm. And uh, I mean, you know, AJ Dillon got loose a little bit, but man, I mean, I feel like it's going to. You talk about you talk about using that that quote unquote extra preseason game. I feel like it might kind of take them a little bit to get this thing rolling. Uh, what the, how the song go? It's going to take a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to take a miracle, right? I don't, I don't see Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers doing anything spectacular this year, right? Um, man, you, you're looking at a team that might mess around and go nine and seven, eight, you know, eight and eight. You know what I'm saying? Like, or you know, whatever it may be as far as the games go this year. Like, you know, what I'm saying? like you, you're Stumble looking at, the ball on the wild yeah, card. you're looking at 500. You know what I'm saying? Or better, like right at 500 or better. And ain't gonna be no when you like because it's too much good football that's gonna be played. You know, cats gonna be getting the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? Wild card is gonna be a ten and six. You know what I'm saying? This is how once once these teams get rolling, how it's gonna be. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be a lot of, you know what I'm saying, big time uh win win totals. You know what I'm saying? So I just don't see Green Bay doing much. Uh young receivers, uh the patchwork offensive line, which we know his offensive line going to get hurt towards the middle of the season. It ain't, you know, is Batiari playing right now? Is he, is he back? Is he back, right? Uh, he's still out, like you know what I'm saying, this cat might retire at this point, right? So uh yeah, and the Vikings, of course, you know what I'm saying. Pump your brakes, shouty. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Pump right. your brakes, shouty. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all ain't what you think y'all. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, yeah, y'all, y'all ain't under Zimmerman no more. You know what I'm saying? The boring ass, oh, Vikings football that we were used to seeing. Yeah, it's a little more exciting because that ball's going down the field, but y'all still have Kirk Cousins behind center. 
and you like that will like other teams before he likes you when it's all said and done. <laughs> right. So uh Justin Jefferson, you are a jewel to have. Mm-hmm. He messed he mess around and tweak his hamstring or something, be out three or four games. Mm-hmm. And the defensive backfield of the Vikings, they lucky. Lucky them cats are dropping balls, right? Yeah, I mean, the media is definitely on, on the Vikings nuts right now. Definitely smoke reaction. They're going to be better, I mean, you know, with with the coach they got now. who's right. going to open up a little bit more for so, them to make plays. Like the youthful exuberance, if you will. You know what I'm saying? The, youthful, right. the guys are excited about playing. You know what I'm saying? So it, it makes it fun. But at right. the same time, as shit eventually dies down and reality strikes, you know? Right, because at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's going to come down to the talent that can execute what this guy's drawing up. And I mean, yeah, it'd be one thing if, he, if he's got old, old Patty Mahomes or Josh Allen, but he's got Mister. You like that, you know? Who's you know about average, slightly above average, probably a notch above Jimmy G, Jared Goff type cat. You know what I'm saying? So Word. we'll see. It's only it's only been it's only been one week. Oh, JP. Speaking of uh, teams that may miss the playoffs altogether, uh, we them boys? Question mark. Oh, the Bucks. Hand it to the ding them cowgirls. I mean, the cowboys. Dak breaks his thumb out for four to six weeks or more. First of all, why do we keep putting this this jank ass fucking team on national television? I don't give a damn about their brand. They do. This is what they do, man. This is like Stockholm syndrome for Washington. Right. Players. It's it's it just is what it is. You know what I'm saying? But so let me get this straight because I haven't really read into this. Right? Did he break his throwing hand thumb or his left thumb? Um, that's a good question. I think he, I think it was his throwing hand, um, if I'm not mistaken. I have the injury report, uh, pulled up. So, yeah, he's, he's, he's expected to miss six weeks. He's, he's getting surgery for it. But I'm like, I'm like wondering, I'm like, is it his throwing hand, though? It can't be, it can't be his throwing hand if it, if he, because. He's I longer, mean, right? Yeah, it, he would probably be out for the season, right? To be honest, you know what I'm saying? Or like 10 weeks or 12 weeks, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah. I, I'm asking because his I, right thumb. By the way, that's that is the number one question on Google right now. Which thumb did Dak Prescott break? It's, it's, so it is his right it's, thumb. It's, it's, it's his throwing thumb. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, he's uh. I mean, man, wow. Damn. I mean, I, I feel sorry for Dak, man. I just feel bad for him, bro. Let's like, be honest. Like, like dog, you just. I mean, he can't win for losing, bro. You know what I'm saying? You know what it is? How about this, Dak? How about you get away from the Cowboys? Right? You might be better, right? It's the jankification of the Cowboys, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's that dark cloud that's hanging over your head, bro. You know what I'm saying? You're a talented football player, right? Good quarterback, put on a better team. Hmm. Man. Yeah. And meanwhile, you know, Tom Brady, you know, Tom Brady, you know, definitely has his, his, his Under Armour cement feet cleats, but he did just enough. Leonard Fournette was tote met bang. And, uh, you know, defense, they made some good play shot to Antoine Woodfield Jr. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, the Buc- the Bucks are going to be right there in the mix, man. Of course, They're going to yeah. be right, right there in the down. mix. Tom Bowles right led veteran team. You know, you get, oh, Mr. I'll tow your ass up in the, in the sky box. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. This. He, he, he like this, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yeah, you get, you get that one eye up. So, uh, yeah, the, Buc- the Bucks are are going to be are gonna be fun. There's a lot, a lot of continuity there if they stay healthy. And all we alluded to at the homecoming for Mr. Dangerous, let's ride. But they lose 17 to 16. Uh, Nathaniel Hackett decides to tote out old McManus for the 64 yarder. They burned a lot of time. You saw Peyton on yeah. ESPN too going like yeah. this. Peyton was like this. Literally, literally almost 20 seconds, bro, went off the clock or some shit like that. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, come on, man. Like if you go if you was gonna do that, right? I, I don't understand. I don't get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, damn that. It don't matter. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> that was just stupid. I don't know. There's nothing else to say. It was stupid. You paid this man two hundred sixty-five million dollars, right? Let him do what he do so well. Fourth and five, right? Fourth and five, man. He would have got that five. I'm convinced yeah. that Russ would have got that five yards, bro. Yep. He would have took off running. He would got that shit. He, he could have bootleg and got it. He yeah. split. They would have hit him because they were all riled up, and jacked up. It would have been another fifteen yards. Now you got a chip shot as opposed to a motherfucking prayer. Of a fucking kick for the win, like get the fuck out of here, man. Right, and it's also like, like you said, not, not only for what they paid him, that that's you pay him to be able to to deliver in those situations, but also it's like, yo, Russ had this game circled the entire off season. Right, yeah, put the ball in his hands for the man. Let to win let, the game. let let the man let do what the man do. Let Russ goddamn cook. What the fuck, bro? Right. Hey, shout out, shout out to Gino for putting something in the oven because he was he was slanging that thing a little oh, bit. Oh yeah, Gino was good reads. And Gino, Gino, nice Gino, throws. 
you know, tossing that hole, you know what I'm saying, with the same time, we know Gino, you know what I'm saying, Gino, uh, he'll show up for a little while and then he'll disappear for a long time. Yeah, they were, they were definitely, you know, listen, you know, the week, the week ones, the team, the team's coming with juice, especially in them home openers, they're going to come down to earth a little bit, but it just, you know, it, it was, that was a, that was an excellent start to uh, watch Monday Night Football. By the way, did it kind of trip you out here, Joe Buck and Troy Aikman on Monday Night Football? That kind of threw me yeah, off for a second. It's kind of weird. I, you're right. You know what I'm saying? I'm listening to them like, hold on, what the fuck am I watching right now? But yeah. Hey, Fox. Yep. It ain't Fox, baby. You know what I'm saying? Joe Buck, Troy Aikman, you know what I'm saying? Up there making out, you know what I'm saying? Between camera views. Uh <laughs> Oh, shout out to Skip Bayless. Holy shit. Say a word oh, to Skip Bayless. God. Old ass. Oh, you know what I'm saying? God. Skip Bayless looked like a skeleton, you know what I'm saying, with hair. Right, with the, with the, with the fucking chain of Jordan. With, with yeah, with the, with, the, with, the, with the OVO chain. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, so that's a week one recap, maybe. You can tell, let us know what you think in the comments, and we will definitely reply to that once we are back live with you folks. Uh, but again, please tap in with our sponsors, Valley Boys Association Clothing. Go to valleyboysassociation.com and use code PODCAST22 for 20% off your order at checkout. Get that fresh drip for football season. And again, please head over, BG, Desert, Cardinals fans. Go to jbandbennyblueview.com slash store and get 10% off your Bird Gang All Day Unisex shirt using code BG at checkout again. That's JB and BangleReview.com slash store to see that all over our social media. And again, get our guy, it's Tim Dubai.com for your pre new or pre owned vehicle. Text review to 505 4447 or DM him at it's Tim to buy on Instagram. Man, now look, before we get into some week two, let's do a quick little check in on our for the people NFL.com fantasy league. And uh, hey, we're what hey, the review savages, baby. We are one and oh, we are leading the second division. Uh, shot to Nando, he got the, the win. Young Mike, one of our previous champions, got the win. Bridges Brigade got the dub as well, as well as 550 Showtime. Julio, think you are limitless. KB got the dub as well after week one. Uh, so that's what's happening in our NFL.com for the people fantasy football league. Now, before we get into goddamn week two Savage Picks, we have to see how we did with week one and with a drum roll, please. We are tied, goddammit. Nine, six, and one. Let's go to the games right now. JB, of course, uh, picked the Bills. I picked the M -M -M Mafia to beat the Rams as well. I correctly picked the Browns. JB picked his former employer, the Panthers. We both picked the Dolphins. JB correctly picked the Eagles. We both picked the Ravens. Uh, JB correctly picked the Bears. Uh, we both picked the Colts. However, they ended in a tie. We both picked the Jags. The Commanders <laughs> got it done late. The Gumble Bull Baby Saints got it done there in the Big Dirty Bird. JB correctly picked the Steelers. I correctly picked the Chiefs over his BG. I also correctly picked the Vikings over the Pack. We both had the Chargers. We both had the Titans who lost late to the G-Men. Talking about the Jankified Week 1. Uh, both picked the Bucks, and then we both picked the Rockos, but then they fell to the Squawks there on Monday Night Busters. Football. The fucking Busters. So that's Busters. what it is. With week one, but now we got to get into it right now with week two, Savage Picks. That's right, baby. Pow, pow, pow. You hear that Stone Cold theme? Starting right off, Thursday night football. It's a San Diego, L.A., Barstow, San Antonio, Mexico City Superchargers at the Chiefs Kingdom. And the line is three and a half for the Chiefs at home. And the home of the Chiefs. You know what, I'm what you know about it? <laughs> yeah, I'm taking I'm taking the Chiefs as well. I mean, you know, Chargers played some decent ball, getting a little bit banged up there, but um, yeah, Chiefs home opener. I don't see them losing even to a competitive uh, Chargers team, so I'm Real. taking them as Real. well. All right, it's a keep pounding Panthers going to the G. Man, the home opener there at MetLife, and the line is wow, two and a half. For the G-Man at home, JB. That's a, that's a spicy betting meatball. Tell you what, we're going to see what that plus going to be on that bet because it's cat scratch fever. <laughs> what you mean? You think Carolina finna go up there and lose them fools? Crazy. All right, yeah. I got Panthers on this one, man. 
Yeah, I'm taking the Panthers as well. Brian Dayball was cussing out Danny Jones uh, because he almost tricked it off for him. Saquon Barkley definitely had a day, but he's going to get contained a, a bit more by Cat Scratch Fever's defense. Um, so I'm taking the uh, Panthers uh, on the road to uh, get a dub after the debacle against Baker's former team, the Browns. All right, it's an NFC South matchup, Dr. Bridges. It's the Tampa Bay Bucks going to the Big Gumbo Bowl, baby. The home opener for the Saints, and the line is three for Tampa on the road. I am going to pick the Saints. Right? Ooh, for whatever, whatever like reason, this. the Saints have Tampa Bay's number, man. You know what I'm saying? At home, and they really didn't put up a very impressive – it was not a very impressive showing against Dallas. I'm sorry. They should have shit seven. out of Dallas. Right? They scored one touchdown, if I'm not mistaken. Right? Come on, man. I'm, a, I'm going with the Saints. Les les bon temps roule. I mean, let the good time roll, baby. Man. I honestly think this is going to be a great game. It's early enough in the season to make me want to pick the Saints, but I'm going to take the Bucks. Uh, just more consistency on both sides of the ball, um, and they're going to spoil the uh, New Orleans home opener. So I'm taking the Bucks in this one. Another intriguing matchup. It's the uh, Miami Dolphins coming off the dub here, going against the quote the Raven nevermore, mm. and the line is three and a half for the Ravens at home. Benny, when you're in Baltimore, you got to be more careful. All right. And I'm going to pick Baltimore. We got a nice, strong, thick pause. Lamar Jackson, all right? For pause, you know what I'm saying? Ain't no Geno Smith going on here, okay? So <laughs> we pause in that. But Baltimore does get the win. Yeah, I'm taking Baltimore as well. One thing about Lamar and why he's going to get the bag, it's not only can he uh, he can make the play on his feet, but God damn it, he can take the top off and he can, you know, if you, yes, if you, got, a, if you, if you got a roaming safety that can't keep up, with a deep threat, Lamar can sling it and make you pay. The Dolphins are, I think we both predicted them to make the playoffs. Um, but I think this is going to be one where it's going to be an early test. But the, teams that, the teams that are smart bidding, right, are going to make two or throw the ball down the field because we know he can't do exactly. that. Exactly. And the Ravens are going to do that. And I'm taking the Ravens as well. All right. It's the B-U-M-S bums, bums, bums. Oops, I mean the J-E-T-S-S-S-S -S -S going to the Cleveland Browns, which, by the way, have that creepy little elf in the middle of their field. I don't know if you saw that earlier, JB, uh, as, their, as their mascot. Yeah, they had a throw, you had a, you had a throw bag. Yeah, that's ugh. The little throw bag brown. Ugh. And the line is six and a half for the Browns in their home over. Yeah, I'm going to take the Browns. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the Jets, Jets going to jet. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what the fuck to say. You know what I'm saying? Jets going to jet. All right, so... Yeah, I'm gonna take Cleveland at home. You know, if they were in New York, I might have, I might have rolled with New York to be honest, right? Because you know, uh, Joe Flacco led. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, defense is solid. You know what I'm saying? Like right. Cleveland will make mistakes. You know what I'm saying? So if they were in New York, I probably would have rolled. But nah, they in Cleveland. Cleveland. <laughs> First one of the year. Yeah, right. I'm, take, I'm taking Cleveland as well. You know, Chubb's gonna be toting that rock and. And Kareem Hunt's definitely going to be making some Tone plays. Their skin. And, and they're going to be making they're going to be making enough plays on defense to hold the Jets in check. Doctor Bridges, I can't believe I'm saying this uh, for the first time in 24 games. That's right, I did not stutter. 24 games. My kitties are a favorite at home. The line is minus two for the kitties hosting the Commanders, baby. And you got damn right, you know what I'm saying? The kitties get the win, all right, you know what I'm saying? Commanders, yeah. just ain't, commanders just ain't got enough to beat them. Sorry, not at home, not in Detroit. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the minus two line is cheeky as fuck by Vegas. Of course, they're picking their own teams. Listen, ta I mean, talent-wise, matchup-wise, hey, the Lions definitely have it to oh, yeah. the Commanders. Um, commanders actually played some surprisingly decent ball. Um, and it's really just, hey, Detroit, listen, you, you're executing much better on offense. It's going to be about what you do on defense. That's what it comes down to. Stop over-pursuing. You know what I'm saying? You just be just play disciplined defensive ball, and you can contain and handle a team like the Commanders. So we're both taking the kiddies. All right, keeping it in, in the AFC South. Moving to the AFC South. So it's Chad Cars Colts against the Duval Jaguars. And the line is four for the tying Colts going down to Jacksonville. <laughs> Matty Ice is thawed out. He's not the guy. He's just not the guy. And I think they're going to force him to throw some turnovers. Uh, you know, with these young cats, you know what I'm saying, over there in Jacksonville. I think they put one together, and I think they get a win over the Colts. 
Man, I want I want to pick the Jags badly, but damn it, I think the Colts are just gonna have too much for them, and I think they are gonna get it done. I think I think that one's gonna be a real funky ass game to watch. Like this is gonna be one of those games, JB, where you're just gonna be laid out about doing something to check the score, but what's going on? The Colts Jags game. It's gonna be one right. of those games, right? Right. But right. I do think the Colts are gonna have a good week of practice go down there, and they're gonna handle business against a Jags team that's definitely improving talent wise, but eh, isn't quite there yet. I'm going to pick the Colts, kind of to be safe, but there you go. We'll see what happens. All right. Speaking of a team that's fucking struggling, Jimmy, it's the Pats dude going hey. to Steel City, and the line is one for the Pats? Is that because of TJ Watts back now? But I can't even believe that. Hey, you know I'm taking the Steelers. Black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow. Shit. Yeah, I'm taking the Steelers as well. I mean, home opener, I mean – yeah, I'm not the pat the, the pass don't have enough for him on offense too. Hey, what are you thinking about? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like for real. Yeah, I mean that that one might that might one might be an interesting interesting betting game for sure. So we're both taking the Steelers on that. I'm looking right? I'm looking at I'm looking at the bets as I'm looking at the pluses and the minuses as we speak. Right. Yes indeed. All right. It's the uh NFC West, I mean NFC best matchup with me. Squad! <laughs> <laughs> Don't wait the neighbors. It's a Seattle Seahawks against the Ooh, that are guy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Back, not a guy. Ooh. And, the, and the line is come is the line is eight and a half for Frisco in their home opener against a, a squash team that's coming off a solid dub. I would not take the eight and a half. Let me see what's going on with this with the plus minus on this model. Let me I see. Know I know. I know when you check the phone, you're thinking about it. I mean, I'm taking San Francisco, you know what I'm uh, saying, because they're playing in San Francisco, but I ain't yeah, taking no yeah. eight and a half points. Right. Crazy? Hell no. Nah. Crazy? Yeah. The, the squawks of me are going to be week to week. And so, plus plus Let's 340 go. for the Seahawks. I might mess around and put $20 on the Seahawks just because, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you just because. Trailer has struggles. Hey, you never know. But I'm taking the Niners as well. All right, it's the Dirty Bird Falcons coming out here to L.A. and the Rams trying to lick their wounds after taking a whooping in the season opener and the Lions 10 for the Rams at home. Hear me out. Right, here we go. The Rams are going downhill, right? With that being said, I am picking the Falcons to win the game. Ooh. To come to L.A. Ooh. To come to L.A. and to steal one from the Rams. Again, there's some things going on over there that, that we're not talking about. Their offensive line is horrible, right? I mean, they're bad, right? Stafford's elbow is not healthy, right? Uh, Aaron Donald, although he's a terror, he doesn't have Von Miller to keep him clean anymore, right? And the backfield of the, 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 the Los Angeles Rams has holes in it, right? So with that being said, Marcus Mariota's legs are going to be the X factor for them to win this game. And at plus 400, I probably will put a hot dub on the game. You know what I'm saying? Because once they get the win, it's going to feel sweet. Make the jello pudding. <laughs> don't make, don't make the coffee face. Jesus. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be smooth like the jello pudding. Oh, yeah. my God. Right, yeah, take, man. Taking the Falcons. Listen, I think the Falcons are going to play him tough, and I think the Falcons may even may even try to be in that category that they're be better than we think they were. But – Rams are not dropping two in a row, especially two at home. If they were playing a better team, like a, a team that's more the caliber of the Bills, then yeah, I'm buying that. I can't get there with the, the you know, the, some of the lack of talent that the Dirty Birds have. So I'm taking the Rams to to get their first victory and, and a victory at home, even though I'm pretty sure there's actually probably going to be a decent amount of Falcons fans there. You know how that oh, is? Yeah. Rams yeah, yeah, right yeah. All right, we've reached it. It's the Bird Gang heading to Vegas to play the Yeet. Yeet. <laughs> <laughs> and the line is four and a half in favor of the Raiders at home. Well, you know we got to pick our squads, right? I feel like we're going to prepare better. I know we're as talented or more talented than the Raiders. Yes. Their offensive line is trash, right? We're going to go in there and get the dub, all right? Come on home with the win. You feel me? Ja feels. I'm taking the BG as well. I think it's going to be. I think there's going to be. You know, they're going to, there's going to be some piss and vinegar in the, in this week of practice, and uh, they're going to have some. They're going to have some coming to Jesus moments in the, in the film room. 
Uh, so I think Kyler's going to be better prepared. I don't think it's going to be perfect. I think the defense is going to be a little bit more sound than they were last week, forcing an old, old Derek Carr who can sling it, but is known to make some mistakes. If they can really key on Devontae Adams, I think they definitely have a shot. It's going to be a fucking a raucous crowd in that Vegas home opener. But I think the firepower gets it done. I wish they, you know, obviously, I mean, hell, any Burgang fan wishes they had the hop. But I do think that BG is going to go in there and get it done. I don't see them dropping to the row. Hey, remember, folks, they're they're a September and October team, so we we got to we got to stick with that theme. They got to get some dubs in the month of, in the month of September. You better so get I'm them. Better get them. I'm taking them as well. All right, it's the Who Day Bungles out of the. Ding up with them cowgirls and them cowboys. Them Dak Prescott, Prescott less Cooper Rush more cowboys, and the line is. Seven for the reigning AFC champs going to Jury World. Yeah, man. Um, I don't see Joe Burrow dropping two. I'm going with Cincinnati. Yeah, Cincinnati, too much firepower, too many holes. Particularly, I mean, listen, Cooper Rush, decent enough backup as you can hope for. Not going to be dynamic enough to go score for score, blow for blow with the Bungles. So I'm taking them as well. All right, it's the H-Town coming down. Texans going to the Mile High City for the Denver's home opener, and the line is 10 for the Broncos at home. Well, the line, oh, the line scares me, right? But, you know, Denver's not dropping to, not at home, right? At all. Houston's going to play tough, uh, but Denver's going to get the dub, you know what I'm saying? I agree. One thing Nathaniel Hackett, the new coach for the Broncos, has already admitted is, hey, I probably should have put that in Russ's hands. And he'll be damned if he's going to let McManus kick a 65 yard. I don't care if they're a mile high in the bar. The ball will be lighter in the air and travel further. He's not going to make that same mistake twice. Um, this game actually might be more than 10 because the Broncos are going to be ready to go. And I'm taking them as well. All right. Sunday Night Football, it is the NFC North matchup. It is the Bears against the boom, 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 go, Pack, go. Do you want to talk about a line that I'm actually not so sure about, JB? The line is 10 for the Packers at home. But I don't know about that one, my guy. I don't know about that one. Let me, uh, let me check and see what's popping with these plus and minuses real quick. Ah. Ah, let me see here. Ooh, plus 375 for the for the Bears. So guess what? All right, we're going to bear down in, in Lambeau, right? I'm going with the Bears, bro. I don't have faith in the Packers. I don't have faith in the Packers, bro. I don't have faith in them. I think even with the whole minus the preseason thing and, like, the, the cohesion, I, I just don't have faith that they're going to do what they're supposed to do. I just don't. You know, man, I'm taking the Packers. Something tells me this is gonna this is gonna be some jank. But I'm taking the Packers on the strength of the run game and the defense to shut down the Bears. I just haven't seen the Bears have not shown me enough. And albeit it's because they old old bat naggy. Now they have a new coaching staff. But man, this is definitely an opportunity for the Bears to go in there and steal one. But I'm just gonna I'm just it's hard hard to hard to bet against Aaron Rodgers consistently losing. He can drop one here and there, don't get me wrong. But like, I'm I'm taking the pack at home on this one. I understand. I feel you. You know, I, it's just, I hey, feel you. I feel you. Gotta see look, some of the evidence. I, I, I'm understanding the reason. I, I am. I'm understanding it, man. Yep. All right, and Dr. Bridges, we have a Monday Night Football double header. It is a tighten up Titans and going up to the Mafia, Mafia, and the line is ten for the Bills Mafia and their home opener. I mean, I might take the points and the but and the bills because Tennessee just I ain't gonna get it done. Yeah, uh, Bills are gonna have too much for them, and I'm, I'm taking them. People are gonna be get, gonna get choke slammed through tables, baby, and get that mustard well, and ketchup poured on them, and it's going down. Hey, buddy. Buffalo, and I'm taking the Bills as well, and then it's the uh, Vikings heading to your drafting team, the E A G L E S Eagles, and the line is two. For the Eagles at home. That game's gonna be good. I'm interested in that game. Uh Philly, Philly. Philly, where I am from. Yeah, buddy. You know what I'm saying? What you mean? Come on, dog. Look. The link. Monday night. Rocking. Buck Wild. Vikings whack ass secondary. It's good. Look. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we getting money, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? So Philly gets the win. 
not going to be the most beautiful game in the world. It's going to be a knockdown drag out, but that's what Philly is all about. That's the spirit of Philly. Knock down, drag out, right? Yeah. So, and they all foot it. Yeah, man. It's the home opener there at the link. Balance some balance football. Uh, and they're, they're gonna make they're gonna make Mister You like that. Make some mistakes. So I'm definitely taking the Eagles at home as well. And that's it. We'll see who's right, who's wrong, who's both right, who's both wrong. Doctor Bridges, before we get out of out of here, of course, let the people know your thoughts with some "We Need Us, Baby." What you got, good sir? Uh, rappers. Stay the fuck out of LA, right? Uh, LA is grimy, grimy right now. Like I'm talking about grimy, grimy, and and just and so so rest in peace, this kid P P and B Rock. Uh, I, yeah, I used to say his name. I didn't even know the kid existed until my boy told me he got killed. But it's still sad. It's not cool, right? But you can save yourself a lot of drama by staying the fuck out of LA, right? Yeah, everybody want to go kick and hang out in LA, but as it was said, you know what I'm saying, in, in in Tombstone, nobody has an idea about the real play in LA, right? You ha you can't go in there flossing and thinking it's all good, you know what I'm saying? Because these cats, they specialize in extortion, right? So you go in your dumb ass in LA thinking you, you, you missed the big shit, and next thing you know, you ain't shit, right? Or you rob and you give a phone number and they like, you want your shit back, call this number. <laughs> right and now you paying for yeah, your motherfucking your bag, shit yeah. you paying for your motherfucking shit so rappers man stay out of LA bro and stop fucking with these trifling ass hoes right stop fucking with these raggedy ass bitches that you see on Instagram and you think they all that native shit and yeah they oh she love me please the reason why that kid did it right now is cause of that bra right so do yourself a favor guys stay the fuck out of LA alright but with all that being said, man, you know what I'm saying? We got to care about each other. You know what I'm saying? It just is what it is. Bottom line, treat those how you want to be treated. Better yet, I, I like to say this. Treat people the way you want people to treat your goddamn kids. Right? How about that? All right? Because we can take a lot. We, we can bear a lot on our shoulders. But when somebody wrong your kids, you know you finna go, go crazy. Right? So treat people the way you would have them treat your kids. This has been the JB and Benny Blue episode 230. You can follow us at JB and Benny Blue on all social media platforms. Subscribe to our YouTube. Tell your friends about us. You know what I'm saying? All of that right there. You know what I'm saying? You can catch us on our own personal. So, oh, I'm sorry. We're available at casualsports.com. We're live streaming. You know what I'm saying? Right here in the desert where I reside. You know what I'm saying? With our casual sports crew. Follow us on our individual Instagram page at 73kingjb73 and at Benny Blue Eyes. Of course, always has been, always will be. You want to see now, nah, you want to hear. Are smooth, smooth voices. You know what I'm saying? Uh, one hot dollar to that patreon.com slash JB and Benny Blue. Also get exclusive content, just like Benny said earlier. True NFL stories from your boy, JB himself, man. I know you guys want to hear that, man. We're wilding out. All right, Cars fans, you get 10% off our Burger Gang all day unisex shirts. Uh, just use code BG at checkout. All right, JB and Benny Blue.com, review.com slash store. On our social media platform, you know what I'm saying? You can hop right on there, go get that merchandise. You know what I'm saying? It's made to order. All right. Sponsorships, new music, or hate mail, hit us up at JB and Billy Review at gmail.com. Get at us, man. You know what I'm saying? We especially want to hear that new music. We like that yes. segment. We like yes, to do that. Man. We like Savage Reactions. We love Savage Reacting at the end of our show, play some new music and give you the real, real how we feel, man. You know what I'm saying? It's all, all said in love. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, without that being, uh, you know, saying at the end of it, I mean, with that being the end of it, uh, we just want to thank you guys again. Checking into us. Episode yes, 230. Uh, Benny, have a safe trip. You know, saying, Thanks, sir. Again, you recorded. And of course, you know, saying we'll be in touch until next time. You guys enjoy this good football. We out. Well, holla after week two, baby. Peace. Peace.